Welcome once again to Blues Beat, where today we're joined by MEN City correspondent Stuart Brennan for a look back at what has been a most memorable season for Manchester City. Stuart, good afternoon, and uh, just remind us, what were the expectations at the start of this season? Well, the expectations from the owners were, were very, very clear. Um, they wanted top four for Champions League football, and if possible, as a, as a bonus, they wanted a, that first piece of silverware for 35 years. And Mancini was made patently clear, you know, it was made patently clear to him that uh, that was what was required. And fair to say they got off to a good start. Yes, they did. Um, I think Sheikh Mansour came for the first time in August and that inspired everyone. I think the, the whole ground seemed to be lifted by that visit. And uh, Liverpool were beaten 3-0 uh, and it was buzzing. Um, there were one or two little blips. Uh, I think the next league game was, was a defeat at Sunderland and there was a a defeat at, at Wolves thrown in there, but, um, you know, wins over Chelsea, the win at Blackpool, which was a great game, um, wins at Wigan, it, it was it was a good good start to the season. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, the, the, the European front opened as well, didn't it? Yes, it did. I mean, it was, the Europa League was seen as, uh, was, was pretty important because, you know, it was a good chance to win that silverware and also get valuable like, European experience, which, which will, you know, hopefully will pay off next season in the Champions League. Um, it means it meant an awful lot of games, but uh, we had one or two interesting, exciting games like the Juventus, um, like Poznan, uh, where, where, of course, you know, I introduced a new crowd celebration, which was uh, which was most welcome. It sort of lit up the season and uh, given us all a giggle right throughout the season. Is that the, the main thing that they'll take from the, from the European run this season, the, the Poznan? <laughs> well... Yeah, I mean, that's the fun thing, but there's a lot of a lot of positives to come from that, that European run. You know, it's not easy learning to juggle, learning to live with that lifestyle of flying out um, on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and then getting back early and still wanting to prepare for your next league game. It's something that the likes of United, Chelsea, Arsenal, and even Liverpool have done down the years, uh, and you get accustomed to it. And I've got, I think the main thing City will take from that is they know what's required now. They know how to how to prepare for it, and they know how to come down from it as well. Sure. And on the uh, on the FA Cup front, things were uh, things were running smoothly, weren't they, from the off? Yeah, yeah. Um, a little tricky early on. You know, they had one or two scares. I know in the in the first round there was a scare at Leicester um, that that needed a replay, and then another one at Notts County, Edin Dzeko scoring ten minutes from the end. But um, I, th I think the, the, the sad demise of Neil Young put a different perspective on things. You know, everybody wanted wanted City to do it for him, and of course for Malcolm Allison, um, and that that put a, a new new impetus and a new emphasis. The players understood that. You know, the players talked about that as well, um, and that that added to it. Um, they were a little fortunate in some ways in the cup run, but uh, you know, in the draw. But um, you know, Aston Villa came here, but and that that could have been a tricky one but they fielded a weakened team and then it was Reading in the quarterfinals and although they were tough it was always going to be um, it was always going to be a City win that one I think Certainly I mean we'll come back to the FA Cup in a few minutes but um, obviously January saw the uh, the arrival of another striker Yes Edin Dzeko came with a big reputation £27 million and uh, we, we all scrambled for YouTube and and watch the highlights of him, and he, he, he looked the part, and, you know, he still does at times, um, but it's difficult being dropped into the middle of a Premier League season. It's, been, it's difficult being dropped into the beginning of a Premier League season, never mind the middle. Um, and I think that there have been times when he's, he's shown what he's about, um, uh, he, and it's difficult to, you know, to not only to come into a Premier League season, but to come into a team that's challenging for, for honours on three fronts and be expected to to kick in straight away. Um, so I felt sorry for a lot of times, but I, I get the feeling that we'll see the best of him next season. With a, with a full pre-season under his belt? Yes, absolutely. And the, the same goes with one or two other players as well. Now, I suppose in, in previous seasons, uh, much of the focus has been on the derby games. What did you make of those this season? The first one is best forgotten, I think, the 0-0 at, at the Eastlands. Um, one thing it did show is just how much respect United have got for City these days because they, they didn't come and, and just try and play their game. They uh, they were quite happy to, to sit back and, and play on the counter if need be. Um, and perhaps City showed United a bit too much respect in the same regard. In the second one, I thought City had learned from that and they actually took the game to United and, and dominated it for long spells. 
but then of course lost it to a to a, a tremendous Wayne Rooney goal. Um, but even so, even though they lost that, I think City can take a great deal of comfort and a, a great many positives from that game. The way they actually tackled United, and I think that they did that going into the, the FA Cup semi-final. Okay, so we get to March, Stuart, um, out of Europe, uh, and then there's a wobble in the league as well, isn't there? Was, was that the most testing time? Yeah, it was. There, there were a few injuries knocking around. Nigel de Jong got injured at a, a bad time. Uh, we had um, the, the problems with Colo Torre. Vincent Company was out for a couple of games. Um, you know, Carlos Tevez missed two or three games in, in a spell. It, it just, that kind of thing. When you've got so many games coming thick and fast, you, you know, they, they can take the wind out of your sails, and that happened a little bit. In some ways, going out to Dynamo Kiev, the Europa League, was a blessing because it freed up the rest of the season. I mean, God only knows what would have happened in the rest of the season if, um, if they'd have had Europa League games to play as well as the League and FA Cup games. It, it could have been a step too far, so perhaps that was a blessing in disguise. Certainly, uh, and it certainly set up a grandstand finish, didn't it? It certainly did. Um, obviously, the game that, even more so than the final in, in many ways, the, the semi-final against United was it was a big, big day. It was a big, great, big day for the fans, and uh, you know, and the outpouring of unmitigated joy was uh, was fully justified. But I think it was a big day for the players and for the manager. I got the feeling that that was the moment that Roberto Mancini realised. He could put faith in his team to go out and attack teams as good as United uh, and not just contain them and try and hit them on the break. Um, because City did that and they absolutely dominated and battered United in that second half. Um, and I, again, that's something they will take into, into next season. Um, there was the blip at Liverpool um, 3-0 when I think Mancini underestimated Liverpool a little bit and thought he could get away with a, a weakened team, which he, he couldn't. Um, but I think City have, uh, have won seven of the last eight games, uh, Liverpool being the blip, uh, including an FA Cup final and a very big game against Tottenham. Um, if they can keep that kind of form going into into next season, I, I, sprinkled, I think it was six clean sheets um, in amongst that a lot as well. If they can keep that going into next season, it, it could be an even more exciting season next time. Sure. I mean... There have been question marks at times over Roberto Mancini's future, but do you think this last month really cemented his place at City? Yeah, I, th I think it was ridiculous to suggest that. I think City have learned the lesson with that one. You don't, you don't just discard managers. You, you've got to, you've got to give somebody time to, to build something new. Uh, and he's done that, I and mean, it's incredible. Really, it's his first full season, and he's won the FA Cup and got City into the Champions League with a team that really only came together at the start of the season. Um, I think he's exceeded expectations, and I think it would have been stupid to. Uh, everyone knew you could see you could see the team improving as the season went on. You know the blip here and there, but you do get that like, you get bad days at the office, and you could see the improvement. Uh, those clean sheets at the end tell you everything. That's something City have missed. They've always had an attacking tradition, but you don't win titles just being an attacking team. You need to know how to defend and when to defend, and uh, I think that's something that that is the biggest thing Mancini has brought to them. Um, without killing off that, uh, that that attacking flair which, which City have always tried to promote. Sure, and fair to say there'll be few teams looking forward to the start of next season as much as City? Yeah, I think, I mean the fans just want the summer to fly by, you know, forget the beach. I think they just want the summer to get get over with and then we're into the Charity Shield and Champions League and it's, uh, I'm getting quite excited myself thinking about it. To be honest with you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stuart. Okay, no problem.